You know, I've talked about a lot of things about the ancillary aspects of Power Rangers from the bases, their powers, their weapons. And I did mention like, you know, some of the locations they've been through out, out the series, but never really rated them how good they were from either story perspective, just how they looked. So I said, let's finally do that. Lost, Lost Galaxy Bar. Now, the Lost Galaxy bar has to be the worst place done on all the series. It was obviously where Bulk worked when he was on Terra Venture, but besides, I think the only episode that really featured it was when Trakina was trying to seduce Mike, and I don't even think it has a name or they ever said it on screen. It's just by far the worst place, and the main characters didn't even really hang out in it, and they usually just were in their rooms and eating lunch and dinner and talking about whatever the situation was going on. By default, this bar is the worst one. SPD Rec Room. Now, unfortunately, even though SPD had a lot of locations done and made, the SPD Rec Room was kind of like not really used. I thought it was a pretty cool room. It had some video games, obviously has the synthesizers, uh, that holographic table, which was like a nice homage to like Star Trek VI and other sci-fi shows. It's a decent place, don't get me wrong, but it was just unfortunately really used. And it's a shame because it was a nice, fairly big area that they can use. I wouldn't be surprised though that for production wise, it was probably used for other locations and layers and stuff. Ernie's Brain Freeze. Now Ernie's Brain Freeze, it's not a bad location at all to hang out in. I just think it was a pretty big downgrade compared to even Ernie's Juice Bar in MMPR because of how small it is. But not on top of that, no one was in there. I think one of the things that makes a, a, a location feel lame it's just empty, it's boring, it doesn't really have a purpose. And like I said, I loved its look. Unfortunately, it really didn't get any personality to it. You had fun with Ernie, but other than that, it was really just that it. It was just there for usually an introduction, a plot point, or, you know, wrapping up an episode. Riptide Gym. Probably the closest we've gotten to the youth center in years. It's the place where the characters first met, and it's a nice hybrid location. But the show didn't use it much. Huge chunks ignored it. Even when Roxy and Blaze were freed, we still didn't get to see it in season two, and it would have been a good way to keep them active in the show. Bar the video game episode and the bizarre music video one, it's low on my list for wasted potential. Search spot. The same goes for the surf spot. Now, obviously at the conclusion of Turbo, they wanted to go away from Ernie's Juice Bar or slash the Youth Center. And they decided to come up with the surf spot, which was a redress of the Youth Center, but it was okay. I did like its design. Well, we really didn't get to use it all that often, which was unfortunate. A set that they did take time to build and it was a new you know, look. It was trying to feel kind of Hawaiian. They even filmed an exterior, which again, if this wasn't intended to be used more, they wouldn't have put that much effort into it. So unfortunately, it was just probably the way space was evolving throughout it. Maybe at the time when they were initially conceiving space, they thought, oh, maybe because this is kind of the final season, we're gonna scale back on places. So we'll probably put a lot of things in the juice bar because that's what the juice bar really is for in the old MMPR days. It was a place that they had to always go to. That's why a lot of the school settings and stuff were always put in the juice bar because they just couldn't afford to build or go film in real locations for you know, school activities. It was a good idea, it was a cool location, but unfortunately not really used. And I don't even think we've seen every side of it. Storm Chargers. Now, Storm Chargers was kind of uh, the first time where the Power Rangers team actually works somewhere in the series. I thought it was a really interesting idea because again, it works into the story. It's like what Dustin loves, motocross and gear and whatnot. It was just kind of sucked because you really couldn't see what it was. I obviously it's a store that sells a lot of merchandise and blah, blah, blah. And I think that was kind of the detriment of why we really didn't get to see Storm Chargers. You're showing brand names and obviously Power Rangers doesn't want to give free advertisement to anything. That's why they block out like Jansport and the old MMPR days. So I think because of that restriction, they didn't really showcase the whole place. That was a cool idea. It looked interesting, but overall not really utilized well. Youth Center. 
Unlike Riptide, the Youth Center was the all-to-be-all -all location. Its purpose was, was to do all the plots for the series in one place. It didn't make much sense when the school events happened there, but the Juice Bar slowly became the iconic locale for MMPR, from Bulk and Skull, Billy's Cake Machine blowing up, to Pudgy Pig and Jason teaching his karate class. You needed a random rare fruit to stop a bird monster? Ernie got you covered. Dinobite Cafe. Now, the Dino Bite Cafe, I thought, was a really good, like, in between of, oh, the Rangers have a job, and the place is pretty, you know, cool, useful, and interesting, and it had some fun little plot, you know, plot points here and there, where, like, Coda screws up in the background, things go on fire, and it did aid into certain things like Chase's stories with girls and whatnot, and I did like its design overall, And but the thing I liked about it the most was that it went away from brain freeze, and it had actual extras being there. It felt lively, and we were not just stuck in the Dino Museum all the time. It had its own personality to it. I, I just wish they had used it for a little bit more other than just being funny bits. Rock Porium. Now, I think the Rock Porium was the more interesting of all the locales up to this point. It felt more like lived in, more like this person really loves music. It didn't matter how it was physically made, digitally. He had all kinds of things, records, A-tracks, CDs, cassettes, things that people forgotten about. And I like that because it gave personality not only to Toby, which Toby, I loved his character. He was funny, goofy, ridiculous, and he stole Cam's outfits half the time. But also it showed like what the Mystic Force Rangers were because, you know, they all basically worked there and that's probably how they all met each other. So all of them had to love music to a high degree to work in that type of store. That's the one thing I kind of hated it. Besides that time with Vita, it's never really shown to be like really cared about. There was no real music episodes. No one really sung or loved anything beyond like Vita doing her little things. And even then that was very limited. It's a shame that, you know, we always have to leave these locations that you do fall in love with for another season. Ernie's Speech Club. I love the youth center, Ernie's Juice Bar. It's iconic, it's from MMPR. But Ernie's Beach Club was more interesting mainly because it's outside. It was kind of like the place where they finally expanded on characters like Jason's background. So it was able to open up characters. I love the you know, location. Ernie's in a different place and he was used more. The beach gave him that opportunity to get more scenes, more acting and for the character. And not to mention, it gave more extra nonsense to give for Bulk and Skull, yeah. which is what I really liked about Zeo when it started expanding into more areas, more like vacation-esque type of stories where we got to see more things. Haley's Cyberspace. Now Haley's Cyberspace was kind of like the like top of the line at the time where it's like, oh, internet cafes came into play where, you know, loads of people are starting to play you know, online shooters. Wow, the equivalent of that. So it was amalgamation of that plus Ernie's Juice Bar. She's the one who designed and built everything and all this stuff. I love the details of like, oh, this kind of feels like friends. And it all enhanced the characteristics of like the main cast because Ethan had his place with the video games. Uh, Kira had the place with the singing stage. Uh, Connor would love to sit on the chair in the back to do either work or other stuff. Trent, the same thing, he can draw. And of course you have the bar, which was a really unique place. I wish they showed it more. So you couldn't really tell exactly what was like on the back wall and what she served. Jungle Karma Pizza. The number one hangout place that I love, which will be very surprising is Jungle Karma Pizza. Because how many superheroes can you really say makes their pizza, delivers it, and then has their secret base in the back. It was always featured in the show. So unlike Dino Bite or even in Beast Morpher's place, it was always there. There was always some fun nonsense going on. All the side characters were even in their focus too. So you enjoyed that either banter, stupidity, them making a mess, screwing up orders, not to mention all the crazy recipes. And then of course, I think it was helped mainly because of RJ's personality. If RJ wasn't so liked because of who he was and how he acted, I don't think Karma Pizza would have stuck out that often. And it's kind of a shame you know, it didn't become a, a constant like thing that Rangers went to. Because in Super Sentai, the Upper Ranger Curry store, a lot of plot points for either team ups or anniversaries started from that store. And that's like, oh, how that's how Decker Ranger met this character from Maji Ranger or whatnot. There was always some fun thing. I wish 
PR had done a similar thing to Jungle Karma Pizza, but it didn't really last long past, I think, a few mentions here and there. I love the locales of Power Rangers. Also, when it works into a story, because it's cool that either a monster invades it, or they are like they can use it as a temporary base of operations. Even though the the Sylvie episodes have been in space, it still worked into the plot line of it. I think when a season doesn't have those recreational, you, you kind of lose the charm of Power Rangers. You know, Sensei's there, for example, or Zordon's there. The Rangers really can't have like a break. They can study, work, relax as much as they can. And then of course get screwed later on because they had their communicator goes off. So yeah, if you have a suggestion or topic you'd like me to cover, leave a comment down below and I may use it in next week's video.